Welcome to Gastrocentric Histories, recipes inspired by the African diaspora. In this episode, we'll discuss the impact that sugarcane had on the transatlantic slave trade. Sugarcane is a grass grown primarily in the tropical and subtropical regions of the world. In the 15th century, the Portuguese were the first Europeans who adapted a plantation system for growing sugarcane on large scale on the island of Madeira. Portuguese soon began establishing successful sugarcane plantations along additional island territories. Other European nations then began to colonize the islands in the Caribbean Sea to gain a piece of these sugar profits. The two most important commodities produced from sugarcane at this time were rum and molasses. Sugarcane, refined in both the form of molasses and rum, played a pivotal role in the transatlantic trade of Africans as well as the destruction of indigenous Americans, and it built European wealth. Between 1748 and 1788, over 1,200 ships brought 350,000 enslaved Africans to Jamaica, Britain's largest sugar-producing colony. The production of sugar was brutal and dangerous. It required and killed hundreds of thousands of enslaved Africans. Every stage of the sugar-making process required strenuous labor, close supervision, and careful timing. It was a slow and laborious crop that required 14 months to ripen. Molasses was first exported to what would become the United States from the West Indies to make rum. And until the 1880s, molasses was the most popular sweetener in the United States. The origin of the word rum is unclear, some claim that the name is from the large drinking glasses used by Dutch seamen known as rummers. In the English language, the word rum is first mentioned in 1651 when the drink rum bullion, a beverage made from boiling sugarcane stalks, was first reported. Both rum and molasses were important to the 13 American colonies. In 1795, Etienne de Boré, a New Orleans sugar planter, granulated the first sugar crystals in the Louisiana Territory. Today, the U.S. makes about 9 million tons of sugar annually, ranking it sixth in global production, and Americans consume over 77 pounds of sugar per person per year. There are three main types of cane sugars, unrefined, raw, and refined. These sugars differ in how they are processed. The processing of sugar cane itself mainly a function of washing the sugar cane to remove some, most, or all of the molasses and other impurities. Sugar is a crucial ingredient in modern day cake recipes. And today, I'm going to make rum molasses layer cake to pay homage to the many enslaved Africans that lost their lives in the production of sugar cane. To start with, we'll make what I call Michelle's mix the spice base for both the cake and the frosting. Ginger is one of the main ingredients, and because ginger and molasses are a natural pairing, there's an abundance of ginger in Michelle's mix. Cuisines around the world use ginger as an aromatic ingredient, and the spice also has a very long history as a treatment for nausea, motion sickness, gas, bloating, and other digestive complaints. Other spices in Michelle's mix include cinnamon, nutmeg, mace, cloves, and allspice, all ingredients that are common in the Caribbean islands and therefore often used in conjunction with molasses and rum in many recipes. What you wanna do is take the powder form of all of these spices and combine them in a bowl and then put them to the, to the side as you will use these both in the frosting as well as in the cake itself. We will next prepare the rum simple syrup. Simple syrup is always equal quantities of sugar and water that are heated until the sugar dissolves. Here, I am using turbinado or raw sugar. 
This only means that it has been refined enough to make it safe to eat while leaving the natural molasses flavors and color. After the simple syrup has cooled, add the rum. I'm using white rum in this recipe, but you can use your favorite type. Next, we'll make the actual cake. I'm using a stand mixer, but a hand mixer works just as well. I'm using both molasses and brown sugar in this recipe. And brown sugar is made by coating white granulated sugar with molasses. Now, also, if you can't consume cow's milk, almond milk works really well in this recipe. Once you've mixed all the ingredients, divide the batter into two 8-inch pans and bake at 350 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. Remove from the oven and let cool in the pan for five minutes. Then remove from the pans and cool completely on wire racks. After the cake layers have completely cooled, soak each layer with rum simple syrup. I put the simple syrup in a squeeze bottle and then I place the layers on a rack to catch the dripping. The amount of simple syrup used is according to taste, but don't add more than one cup per layer or the cake will fall apart. Allow the simple syrup to be absorbed completely into the cake before frosting the layers. For the rum cream cheese frosting, use a whisk attachment on your mixer. First add the cream cheese and butter and cream until smooth. Next, add the Michelle's mix, vanilla, rum, and a pinch of salt. Again, I'm using white rum in the frosting. However, you can use the rum of your choice, and if you want something a little boozier, you can add a little bit more rum, but not too much, or the consistency will be too thin. Once all the other ingre ingredients have been added, add the powdered sugar a little at a time until the frosting is fluffy. Again, the amount of rum that you add is up to you, but too much will make the consistency too thin and the frosting won't spread properly. Add a bit of frosting to the serving plate before adding the first layer. This holds the cake in place and still so you can continue to frost the cake. Place quite a bit of frosting on the first layer. You want a lot of frosting in between um, the two layers when you cut it. Then you're going to stack the second layer upon this. Add the remaining frosting to the top and the sides of the cake evenly as you would for any other type of layer cake. I am finishing the cake with a Sankofa topper to honor the enslaved Africans that died during the brutal production of sugarcane. The Akan principle of Sankofa is symbolized by a bird facing forward but turning back to remove an egg from its back, symbolizing the learning of history. The egg also represents rebirth and the importance of learning history to move forward successfully. I'm adding some other sprinkles on top to add a little bit of crunch to the cake. This rum and molasses layer cake pays respect to those ancestors that gave their lives to the acquisition of wealth through sugar cane.